This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, we're back for the Hawaii Energy Policy, Policy Forum's uh, show, weekly show, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Um, and I am so happy about that, that we're doing Kauai today, the county of Kauai. My wife is for Kauai. I have a special affinity for Kauai. My co-host here, Maria Tomei, she is the chair of the Working Group for Transportation in the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Hey. And on the phone um, from Kauai is Mayor Bernard Carvalho. Uh, and uh, and um, Lee Steinmetz, and yep. he is the transportation planner for the county of Kauai. So we're really delighted to have you guys here. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have lots of questions for you. Welcome to the yeah, show, uh, Mayor. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you for the chance to talk story. Yeah. And share the story, yeah. So uh, you've been really busy lately, Mayor. Uh, you've got yes, a I number have. of things going on. Can you tell us what your life is like these days? <laughs> well, <laughs> they're very busy, of course. Uh, being mayor now, going to be 10 years eh, as we wind down the mayor, wearing my mayor's hat. And um, more importantly, as mayor, you know, really addressing the disaster mm -hmm. that is at hand. And we're now in the recovery phase. And a lot has happened since that one day, it started in April, April 13th, mm. and um, till today. So, you know, we've come a long way, but some good things has happened, Jay, and I'm very, you know, I'm going to say proud of the team that we've assembled to address the people and the needs of our island. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's interesting because now we have the eruptions on the big island. This is a, a year of um, natural disaster and calamity, what? Um, and, and the press is focused, uh, you know, on a minute-by-minute -minute basis on the eruption over there. And I don't I mean, know not the local press necessarily, but the world press. So many stories. But we forget already that it wasn't that long ago that you had your flood. Um, and I wonder if you could sort of look at that for a moment and tell us what it, what it left you with. How much damage, yeah. how, how much discombobulation uh, about the flood? Yeah, so enough damage overall, I would say, because at one point, a part of our island was isolated. And that was a big, big part for all of us, for me as mayor, of course, to see how we can manage that, to know that our people on that part of the north side of the island did not have access out. So that was a big part of making sure we brought in one of the supplies, we could address uh, their immediate needs. Of course, thank goodness that there was no loss of life and, of course, uh, no injuries. But lots of injury to the land, if you will, yeah. and so and, and, and homes and, and that kind of uh, destruction. So um, you know, we assembled our team. We, we immediately were able to deploy all of our internal team members from the state and the county level. Reached out to the federal, of course, uh, to see what kind of support we can get there. Um, our military base here really kicked in as well. Our, our support from the national. I mean, all of it in the initial phase of the disaster. And um, I did submit a emergency management um, proclamation to place our island into this uh, emergency proclamation mode, mm -hmm. designation, should I say. And as of today, uh, May 23rd, although the big island is experiencing some devastation, we're still in recovery mode, which warranted me to sign and extend my uh, emergency proclamation for an additional 60 days. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that in the media very shortly that as of today, I signed our second supplementary uh, emergency proclamation, which takes us another 60 days and gives us time out to July 22nd, actually, uh, to give us more time to go to the recovery part of what we're doing right now. now what, does it mean, that, I mean, what does it mean, Mayor, to sign, a, to extend the proclamation that way? Is there, are there certain benefits that come due because of that? Right. So, you know, it, it, it helps us to continue to, example, on that side of the island, North Shore, it's still unsafe. Uh, we only have one lane open right now. So we're only allowing or having our residents come in and out of that North Shore part of our island. There's no commercial activity, no business, no nothing. Mm. And they're still repairing or addressing the entire roadway area, the state is. 
which again only allows for one one lane to be open wow. and only for residents of that part of the island. So I'm just talking for the uh, Wainiha to Haena area, which is why this additional 60 days is needed as we continue to address the, the roadway areas over there. So what are your expectations in terms of uh, getting emergency help from state and federal sources? What are your expectations in terms of maybe the possibility of having to, you know, extend the proclamation again? Uh, and what are your expectations as to how long it's going to take to return to normal in Kauai? Well, you know, the recent, uh, in talking to our State Department of Transportation people, and then, you know, we've been talking about this, um, at least two, two, three or more months, you know, mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And so, but we're hoping that example, give an example, the weight of certain cars that can can in and out, we're very sure they're going to be able to move up to a higher um, weight limit. So that would all offer more opportunities for bigger trucks to get in there. But for now, it's very small size vehicles, you know, this mm -hmm. is an example. Mm -hmm. That progress continues, more options open, but we still need to be in an emergency mode, especially for that side. Mm -hmm. The other parts of the island, you know, they're still going through more of an assessment of each part, like in Koloa, which is on the south side of our island, uh, in Kapa'a, Kiapana, like that. So those areas were kind of uh, devastated in certain areas of that community. And so we're working with that. Uh, of course, we did get a uh, presidential declaration, of course, working close with the governor. And um, so that gave us the opportunity for public support, mm -hmm. public support, roads, bridges, ex example. That for sure mm -hmm. we got from the federal government via the presidential declaration, mm -hmm. which gives us the opportunity um, uh, yeah, to get reimbursed for some of the big, big projects we have. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the bigger parts from the federal level, mm -hmm. that FEMA and, and the federal recognition. You know, that declaration, the governor's declaration and the mayor's declaration. You know, it's like um, this has happened a number of times in Kauai. Um, maybe Kauai has had more than a fair share <laughs> of these of yeah. these weather disasters. And uh, yeah. it strikes me that going forward with uh, climate change, uh, we'll have more extreme weather. And so, um, you know, it's kind of a, a learning experience to develop a, a way of looking at dealing with these problems and a system, a countywide system, a, a mayoral system uh, to know what to do when it happens yet again. Don't you think, I mean, is the playbook involved, isn't there? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, I, I kind of more of the boots on the ground kind of guy, you know, to kind of make sure we have a good, solid internal team working at the emergency operating center and then deploying out into the community and visiting and seeing and touching and feeling and then making decisions and, and falling through on that kind of um, experience, if you will. And I got to say, man, you know, we are a resilient island. We're a resilient state. But for Kauai, community, the love, the aloha, the compassion from just people in general, Jay has been overwhelming in support and in all parts of the community and even throughout the state. So that was another big part that kind of helped people get through the hard times. Yeah. When neighbor to neighbor, community to community, garage to garage, um, park to park, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was automatically happening anyway. And mm -hmm. that was a big part of, I believe, you know, bringing people to a place where they really appreciate each other mm -hmm. in times of this kind of devastation. Yeah. And then in the meantime, we as leaders coming through with all the resources, whether it be water and food and supplies and Clorox and whatever it takes to, to meet the immediate needs and then now with the long-term needs that we're going through right now. Yeah, you use the word big, and I like to, I like to, uh, I like to talk about big for a minute. Uh, I okay. like to talk about your campaign. It's called okay. Go, Go Big. And, and, think and big. Think big. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I read recently that uh, you're number one in the lieutenant governor's race. Uh, and that's quite as remarkable because, you, you know, you're a... Uh, you're a neighbor island mayor, and you haven't had yeah. all that much statewide exposure. And somehow, yeah. in a matter of a couple of months, you have uh, escalated to statewide exposure, and you're number one. And I think that's great. How did you do that, Mayor? Uh, all, all I got to say is just a lot of the support out there and working hard, reaching out, touching people. I mean, 
we've been out and about in all parts of the state and even as mayor prior to seeking this office you know wherever i go i'm always talking to people from the uh you know the security guards at the airport to the tsa guys you know just talking and reaching out and then now to know that we we are number one and that that means to me we got to work harder now because you got to be complacent yeah. So that means that we are reaching out, we are talking, uh, we are sharing our story, I, telling people why I feel that we should have the chance to serve at that higher level. I have the administrative experience with the neighbor island perspective and knowing how to manage and understand and really pull things together. We kind of build on a smaller footprint, thinking big. So if you build it strong with the right people, with the right hearts and souls, whatever that activity or project is, and think big to the bigger level, it can resonate throughout this entire state from the federal, state, and county level. And that's been our footprint. You know, some people think that the, the soul of Hawaii, the heart of Hawaii, actually lives on the neighbor islands, and more and more I ascribe to <laughs> well, that. You know, I, I believe that, born and raised here, but I know what it's like to live on Oahu, being a graduate of the University of Hawaii. You know? And so, um, anyway, that, well, that's. Next time you're have, next sure. time you're in Oahu, I'd sure like you to have a show with us. Come down to the studio and uh, give us a status report. Let's take a, a short break, and when we come back, I'd like to talk about transportation because that's why Maria and I are actually here. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> to talk about transportation <laughs> for the working group. Well, we started. Yeah. That's why Lee yeah. Steinmetz is here too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Lee's here. I'm enjoying. <laughs> so we'll take one minute. We'll come right back with Mayor Carvalho and Lee Steinmetz. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution. How to make a brighter day. Watch my show on Tuesdays at 1, called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show, where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. Okay, I told you we'd come back, and guess what? We came back. <laughs> That's Maria Tomei. She's the chair of the uh, energy, uh, rather the transportation work group on the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and we have uh, Mayor Bernard Carvalho and Lee Steinmetz joining us by by uh, phone from Kauai. And and this part of the show, we want to talk about transportation in uh, in Kauai. Uh, you know, uh, Maria, why don't you pose the question we've been talking about? Okay. Well, you know, Kauai has done some really special things in the energy area, including in the transportation energy area and um, planning and coming up with visions for what a more livable community um, would look like and what transportation options the folks in Kauai would want to have. So rather than me saying, hey, this is what Kauai did, we thought it would be great if Kauai folks could explain themselves what's special about what they've done and how they did it so take it away Lee and well you know Claire. we're moving we're moving towards this goal is 100 percent renewable transportation by 2045 that was a commitment that we we did with my fellow mayors anyway. mm -hmm. but for Kauai you know big picture planning policies and procedures we went through a whole transformation in our um, uh, update to our general plan which includes all the walkable, bikeable, complete streets, safe routes to school, connected communities, roundabouts, peanut abouts, all of it giving that experience of maybe transforming our community into that kind of, um, of, of, of local community. And transit for locals and visitors, how we do options and shuttles and all that stuff. Shifting to electric vehicles, not only uh, within our county but of course throughout our communities and encouraging the walking and biking, walking paths. So I think that kind of vision overall, and starting with the heart of Kauai, which is right here in Lihue, 
And then from that comes the arteries, which reach back into the community uh, from whether it be a connecting a school to a walking path or a facility to a school, or whatever it is. But we've been talking that in big picture terms. And uh, Lee, we will follow up on that. Yeah, so I think part of what the mayor's describing is really something that's all-inclusive. So we're looking at this from a big picture plan view of really at a land use perspective. How do we make sure that jobs are close to houses and houses are close to jobs so that we can reduce trip lengths? Mm. Looking at our infrastructure and improving that, like this Tiger project that the mayor was just talking about. Um, also looking at just how do we go about designing things so the community really feels involved in the process. We just went through a process with one of our schools, Kilauea School, and doing a Safe Routes to School plan where we just started with a blank slate and we had the community design it instead of us imposing ideas on the community. And that was really powerful to see what the community came up with and how it, then they take ownership of the plan. It's really not a county-driven plan, it's a community plan. Um, and I think also what, oh, another important aspect is programming, that we don't just look at the infrastructure, we don't just look at the plans, but we look at programs like bike to work day, walk to school day, Right. Things that all, get people out. The emotional and, side yeah. and that experience, the feeling part. We're out there too, you guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, infrastructure changes give people choices. That's the big thing for me. Give people choices in how they move about on our island. And that's the big part. And a big example was we securing a $13.8 million Tiger grant, which is a town court grant. Very competitive grant. We took our team to Washington, D.C. and came home with this grant, which we're going to be launching very shortly. And like I said, it's transforming our island into the walkable, bikeable kind of experience for Kupuna, which is the elderly, or Keiki, and all of that. And, and we're doing, we're not just talking about it, we're incorporating a complete streets uh, programs as well, and all of it ties into the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a, a lot of um, contention here in Oahu and Honolulu about um, Uber and Lyft and the uh -huh. ride, ride hailing companies, and there are taxi cab companies, uh, a minority of, of, um, of, of uh, people in the, in the community have been attacking them and trying to get the city council to impose uh, additional regulation on them, such as might drive them out of business. And in fact, today was supposed to be a big hearing in the city council here on that, on that issue, and there's been a lot in the press, including a piece that I wrote for Civil Beat this morning. Um, uh -huh. So I do, I do come with, a, with an agenda on this. But the question is, how are these ride-hailing companies doing in Kauai? I know you have them, don't you? Um, and, um, you know, do they fit in this plan? And where? So they are here, um, but not uh, to the extent they, yeah. as they are on Oahu. I mean, they just started this past year. So we're, you know, way behind the game in terms of their influence on the island. I would say I think that's really the next big thing in transportation is thinking of thinking of it as mobility as a service. That maybe not everybody owns their own car, but there's car share and there's ride share. And bike share, you know, maybe not everybody owns their own bike, but it becomes something that you share. And when you think of our transit system, we're really looking at a combination of public and private shuttles that work together. Yeah. So rather than thinking about who owns what, we start thinking about how do you get from point A to point B, and how do you seamlessly integrate these various modes and ways of getting around together? And what is, what is the technology that supports that? What are the apps that support that? So I really think that we're on the cusp of this whole new way of thinking about transportation that's going to really change I, I think, yeah, and it's all about giving people choices, mm -hmm. you know, to, to get out and about. I, I believe that. And I really support uh, this whole shuttle movement that we're trying to look at to get people. Because we can't have any kind of rail system on this island or any kind of, you know, that kind of thinking. But how do we get people out and about on the bikes, uh, in a shuttle, you know, or even bike share or ride share programs? And I think it can work overall. Yeah, I think the most interesting thing about this is, um, you know, it's a plan. <clears throat> it's an aspiration. It's a target date. Like energy. Um, and uh, the idea is to make, make it all come true. 
Um, and, I, and I've told you this before, Mayor and Lee, that I believe yeah. it must be the water. In the, it's the water in, in Kauai. <laughs> it, you know, you guys have a special sauce. You, you make <laughs> dreams come true. You've made yeah. energy, the dream of energy come true. And KIUC is uh, just doing a miraculous job. And, you know, that's, that's your partner. You have encouraged that and we incentivized it. And now the question is, you know, does that special water going to be applied, you know, is it being applied to transportation? And if so, can you tell us what's in the water? Well, what's in the water is a lot of love and aloha, number one, and energy, and <laughs> positive feedback, and teamwork, and commitment, and dedication, and collaboration, and cooperation, and commitment. I'm telling you, it's all the big, big success of this is incorporating the values and the the, uh, the, of the community. We, we do a lot of outreach. We incorporate the thoughts and ideas from the community. I always thought take, we take care of the emotional side of everything we do up front and first before we move. And so a lot of it involves community meetings, getting into schools, talking to parents. I mean, to me, that's a big part of being successful. And then you incorporate their values into your decisions. It sounds kind of way out there, but that's what makes it happen. I believe that, which leads to the Aloha Plus Challenge. Well, before we do that, yeah. I just wanted to mention this, that part of the magic water, I think, is partnerships. And the mayor just talked about that. He's so strong on partnerships. But, you know, to be honest, a lot of people, um, a lot of people have different interests. Not everybody, like the word sustainable for some people is a positive word, right. for others it's a negative word. Same with climate change. I mean, there's, everybody has things that are, they're passionate about. and but we can bring them together to talk about the things that they're interested in. So a lot of people are really passionate about affordable housing. That totally ties into transportation. Health and giving people healthy choices of how they get around. Economic development, safety, all of these very education, all of these issues, resiliency, we just talked about our flood. All of these things are, are, are kupuna and how they can age in place. All of these things are themes that we can carry into transportation. And rather than being divisive, we find these common things that people care about and, and, bring, and have that be the way that we bring yeah. people together. Yeah, that's, that's, well, that's a remarkable that's, example of, of, of civic engagement, um, of getting people to function together and, and go down the track together and not have right. contention, and controversy, and obstruction. Yeah. Uh, so I had, one, yeah, I had one question. You mentioned that the Tiger Grant is arriving um, soon. Um, so let's say a year or two or whatever amount of time that's going to be um, in place. Um, at the end of it, what do you envision is going to be different from what, before you started this process? What well, will... right now, if I, can, if I may, right now on our rice street, the revitalization of our rice street, that old Lihue plantation type setting. Yeah and keeping the charm and character, you're going to have um, bike lanes. You're going to have walking paths that are going to be included. You're going to be able to um, uh, incorporate that whole community kind of feeling. Businesses um, participating in supporting uh, walking and biking and all of that, you know, along this one street area. We have the upgrades to all of this um, construction that's going to be happening in transforming our community downtown. Yeah, we really see it as a catalyst for economic development. Oh, sure. And mm -hmm. that by making it a safer place for people to walk or bike or more pleasurable to drive or people to be able to come by transit, it'll change just the way people um, experience the area. It'll be really supportive for businesses. And we're seeing that businesses catch on to this. Um, we had a block party uh, not too long ago, that the businesses supported to show what it's going to like look like after Tiger, and they got so excited about it, they organized a block party, and now they're starting to put together a business association. So we're seeing we're seeing businesses see the value of what we're doing and how it can benefit their bottom line, and wanting to really support it, and then doing facade improvements on their businesses, mm -hmm. or thinking about adding housing on top of their office space, so that you know it. It becomes a public-private partnership. Public-private, yes, light across walks, all of it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this whole transformation has, has begun. 
So this was the block party to kick it off. When is the block party to celebrate the uh, completion? <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go. <laughs> it's supposed to be done in December of 2019. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, you know, um, I just came back from Australia and in Melbourne, which is a really fabulous city, they have free transit around the CBD. Um, and uh -huh. what, what happened as a result, just as you say, because it was better transportation, because it was easier transportation, everybody comes into the CBD, and business thrives in the CBD. Um, and, and this has, like, bloomed Melbourne beyond what it was before. And so, you, you know, you have sort of a natural leverage involved when you improve the transportation in a given area. But my, my question to you is, so you have the $13 million, and I, I would see it as starter money, uh, and then you have the natural the bloom of economic development, that's, that's also going to help. But, you know, what else do you need? Do you need more than that? And how are you going to get it? For, are you talking about for this Lihue area or for the whole county? Whole county. The whole county. So we have our DC. I know. So, you know, we recently, our county uh, went in and, and worked closely with our county council. And so now um, we looked at our GET tax, and that did pass here on Kauai. And whatever funding comes our way, which is an additional $25 million, I go round it off, will go specifically back to roads, bridges, and transportation. And so that kind of additional funding will help us continue to transform and look at connecting communities, walking paths. We have a coastal path, and we want to do spurs that come up from the coast now, inland. I mean, things like that mm -hmm. that I think help to set the commitment, if you will, in the future on how we transform not only the use of our transportation system, but just developing more opportunities, laying it out, if you will. But the hub and the heart starts right here in Lihue, like I said, and then it will kind of lay the foundation for other parts of the island. And that, to me, is the bigger picture. Yeah, I think one, I think one thing is clear, just like energy, you know, you have a better energy grid, you have better economy. You have yeah. better transportation, you have a better economy. Those, those right. two things working in tandem, as you guys are organizing now, uh, will really uh, take uh, Kauai to new levels. Right. You know, right. I, I hate to say this, Maria, but we're almost out of time. I was so afraid of that. it falls on you as the co-host to summarize everything we've talked about, concluded, to, and ex aspired to, um, so that we have, and, and you guys can respond to what she says. So what's your okay. summary, Maria? Okay, well, Kauai has a lot of um, very forward thinking and positive things happening, even when they're faced with challenges like the, you know, the flooding situation. They come together as a community. They keep the lines of communication open. They work together, and they treat each other with the respect and with the positive energy that you know, makes not only the, the short-term crises um, easier to handle or um, more effectively managed, but also the long-term planning. You know, it works for both, the short-term and the long-term. So I'd like to thank um, the folks on Kauai for setting such a good example on how yeah. to do some things that are really very impressive and wish you the best in both your immediate challenges and your longer-term um, goals. Okay, Mayor, rebuttal. Sorry. Yeah, well, I'll go. I mean, I just <laughs> thank you guys for having the opportunity. I mean, I, I, I wish we had more time to talk about specific stuff. Maybe yeah. the next time. Yeah. But there's so many great things happening. Our Aloha Plus Challenge that we never get yeah. to, but oh, yeah. we'll let off share that with you folks. Yeah, there's so much more to talk about. Wouldn't you agree, Lee? I would agree. And Maria, I think that was a fabulous summary. <laughs> you. I don't have a rebuttal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Carvalho. Thank you, Lee Steinmetz. Great to talk with you. I hope we can do it again soon. We'll be following, you know, the steps in your plan. Thank you so much for inviting us. Really appreciate it. Aloha. Okay, aloha. 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 Think big. Aloha. Think big. <laughs>